Live from KSAT 12, the night beat starts right now. The son's going to be charged this, this, afternoon, this evening with capital murder, and the father's going to be charged with abuse of a corpse. So we do expect uh, more charges to be, uh, to be pending. I just hope their family gets peace out of that. Hopefully everything goes well and justice is served for it, because that's tragic. And I'm sorry for their families and their loss. Every day I go through my phone to see memories. You know, that's, that's just never going to happen again. We're never going to be able to have memories or do things together. And Both of them had plans. They were in love. Uh, they were starting a family. They were growing up. And, uh, you know, they just, uh, unfortunately, um, before they got to turn things around, uh, they had their lives taken away. How cruel do you have to be to just innocent lady with a baby? Wasn't even born yet. Relief tonight for friends, family, and everyone else who knew these two people, Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra. Last night, we showed you the father and son arrested in the murders of this pregnant woman and her boyfriend. They are these two men. San Antonio police arresting 19-year-old Christopher Preciado and his father, 53-year-old Ramon Preciado. Both walked in front of our cameras last night at SAPD headquarters. San Antonio police say they are the sole suspects in the murders of Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra. Now tonight we're learning more about what comes next for those two suspects and we'll start with Christopher Preciado. Bear County court records show that he's facing three charges, capital murder of multiple people, abuse of a corpse and altering, destroying or concealing a corpse. SAPD says the 19 year old shot and killed both Soto and Guerra in a botched drug deal. Court records also show that Ramon Preciado is charged with abuse of a corpse and altering, destroying or concealing a corpse. Police say the 53 year old helped his son hide Soto and Guerra's bodies. His bond set at $600,000. It's also worth noting that District Attorney Joe Gonzalez is looking into adding another charge, possibly murder, for the death of baby Fabian. That is Savannah Soto's unborn child. And as the two suspects make their way through the legal system, the victim's family members grateful that police quickly made those arrests. Yeah, Matthew Guerra's father, Gabriel, was struggling, of course, over his son's death. And he tells us that he's relieved about what happened last night. I wake up every morning, have a conversation with Matt, and then get through the day. Have the SAP unit, and, and you know, they, they, they found someone. They did their job and extremely fast, and, and they couldn't have come at a better time. We also tried to speak with the family of Savannah Soto. They wouldn't comment, but said that they'd be open to speaking with us again in the future. Stay with us on air and online for the latest on this story. It's gained national attention. You're going to find the latest developments in this article right now on ksat.com. Damp outside, the drizzle and light sprinkles, they started earlier this evening, shortly after sunset. And now we have the areas of light rain taking over parts of Bear County and surrounding counties as well. Let's start on the south side. Not a whole lot of active rainfall drizzle mixed in, of course, but some light shower activity from Lytle to Lacoste and down near Somerset as well. You get onto the north side of town. This is where it's a little more active in terms of the actual rain and some little areas of yellow and red popping up on the screen. So some moderate showers being detected here, especially in the Stone Oak area eastward all the way to I-35 just north of 1604 there. I'll have another close look at radar and talk about how long this rain is going to last along with how much more we could get in just a bit. Thank you, Adam. What are they breathing in? Fed up, frustrated, concerned. That's how neighbors who live near a scrapyard on Frio City Road are feeling tonight. Yeah, when they gathered for a community meeting two months ago, they were worried about air quality, but now neighbors are taking their concerns directly to city and state leaders. And some tell the night team's Avery Everett they believe their health is on the line. Even in a new year. Nobody should have to live that way, right? This neighborhood is dealing with old problems. I tell people, imagine living in a war zone. Residents around Frio City Road are frustrated. Who knows what could happen? Who knows what we're all breathing in? The neighbors we spoke to believe one scrap center is hurting their health after reports of smoke, fires, and explosions. Eventually, our problem is going to become everybody else's problem. KSAT 12 archives show this has been happening for years, with the most recent fire in September and a community meeting held to address the concerns in November. We finally got the attention that we were asking for. We finally started getting answers. In the new year, these neighbors are writing testimonials, hoping to hand deliver these concerns to city and state leaders, including the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, or TCEQ. 
What appears to be smoke is lingering around the sky of Monterey iron on Thursday night, but it's nothing as bad as that fire from back in September. Now, a couple of months after that fire, we know TCEQ did an investigation into the situation, but they wrapped up that investigation by the end of 2023, meaning that there have been 32 total investigations into the salvage yard, but seven of those have been in the past two years. And now in 2024, there are no more open investigations. In a statement sent this week to case at 12, a spokesperson for Monterey says they have, quote, invested heavily in detection systems, mitigation systems, safety planning, and expert hazard prevention. But with sites like these, neighbors say they're far from giving up. My hope for 2024 is that there is a resolution to this problem and that the folks who are supposed to be policing are actually policing. Taking this new action now in 2024. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. So for the story, we tried to get a comment from District 5 Councilwoman Terry Castillo and a spokesperson released a statement which reads in part, quote, uh, which says that, excuse me, Castillo filed a council consideration request back in November to update city codes for recycling facilities. So we'll have to keep in touch with that. We're learning more about the death of a six-year-old girl. That little girl has been identified as Hosanna Sancho. Police arrested her mother, this woman, Nefertaria Sancho for the child's death. She's now facing a capital murder charge for a child under the age of 10. Yesterday, about 3 p.m., police were called to the Frontera Crossing apartment complex on Watson Road. Hosanna was found unresponsive with a wound to her upper body. Nefertaria Sancho is in the Bear County Jail on a $1 million bond. Online court records show the girl's mother had a previous conviction in 2010 for injury to a child. A San Antonio councilman who was arrested for DWI said he has zero excuses for what happened. Councilman Mark White spoke with KSAT's Garrett Berger over the phone, Garrett Berger over the phone about his December 29th arrest. And White says that that morning he had flown from Australia to Houston, then drove into San Antonio. And then that evening he went to a restaurant with a group that included Councilwoman Melissa Cabello Haverda. And Councilman uh, Suk Kaur says in a statement that she, quote, ran into White at the same restaurant before leaving. White says that Cabello Haverda wasn't feeling well, so he drove her home, then headed to a bar. And when he was pulled over by an officer on Loop 410 about two hours later, White admitted he, quote, had three beers. He was arrested after a field sobriety test. A city hall source says that council members are expected to discuss White's situation during an executive session next week. A new on the night beat a woman walking to work instead in the hospital and a man in jail tonight in connection to a hit and run that left that woman badly hurt. Happened on December 21st. This is 33 year old Tyrell Benjamin. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar said he fled after he hit a woman on Misty Ridge near O'Connor Road on the northeast side of San Antonio. Benjamin charged with collision involving serious bodily injury. According to the sheriff, the victim is a 68 year old woman who was walking to work when she was hit. She suffered a broken pelvis, a broken arm, and she may lose one of her eyes. Also new on the night beat 10 years. That's exactly how long this woman is going to spend in prison after she was convicted in the death of a 78 year old woman. This happened back in May of 2022. According to the Bear County DA's office, Sylvia Ann Lopez was intoxicated on prescription medications while she was driving. She veered off the road when she hit and killed a woman who was walking her dog on the sidewalk. Now, Lopez later admitted that she had taken several medications that made her disoriented and drowsy. An arrest made in a deadly shooting at a convenience store earlier this week in a Facebook post from the department. Fredericksburg police arrested the man seen here, 21 year old Awas Cinco Rapid. Police say he was wearing a mask, a skeleton mask during the shooting. He shot and killed another man during a store robbery on Tuesday night. Rapid being held in the Gillespie County Jail on a capital murder charge. And now here's a look at your night beat news flash. We'll start with this. A sixth grade student is dead. Five others hurt after police in Iowa say that a 17 year old gunman went into a high school and just started shooting. It happened today in the small town of Perry on the first day that students were back from winter break. The school's principal was among the five people who were injured. The suspected shooter was a student at the high school and he died of an apparent self inflicted gunshot wound. Tony Award winning actress Glynis Johns has died. The actress who most people know from the classic Mary Poppins movie passed away today. 
Her manager says that she was at an assisted living home in Los Angeles when she passed away. She was 100 years old. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. Governor Greg Abbott continues to bus migrants from Texas to other cities in the U.S. Now the mayor of New York City suing more than a dozen charter bus companies that are bringing the migrants to New York City. And one of those companies based right here in the San Antonio area. We'll tell you about it. An effort to expand international trade is now moving forward. Two Texas lawmakers say that new reform is going to make it easier to build or expand border bridges specifically. We're talking about U.S. Senator Ted Cruz and Texas Congressman Henry Cuellar. They were in Laredo today to celebrate changes to the presidential permitting process. Those permits are required for construction at border crossings, and the change is expected to expedite work in a process that previously took years. It's going to allow conditional permits to be issued while projects go through a required environmental review. This is a win for Texas small businesses and manufacturers. This is a win for jobs. This is thousands of jobs here in South Texas and all across Texas. So the change is going to benefit several border crossings. That includes the World Trade Bridge over in Laredo, which, by the way, is the largest U.S. port of entry and a proposal for this project would double its lanes from 8 to 18. Meanwhile, 17 Texas charter bus companies getting pulled into the political back and forth over the by, over the border cross crisis. So we know that New York City is now suing the companies that have been busing migrants from the southern Texas border to the city at the direction of Texas. The night team's Patty Santos found a Von Orme company is named in that $700 million lawsuit. This is a national problem. New York City Mayor Eric Adams is going after 17 mostly Texas-based transportation companies in a $708 million lawsuit. One of those companies, VLP Charter LLC in Von Orme. We called the company's owner who said he was aware of the lawsuit but declined to comment. The 14-page lawsuit claims the bus companies earned millions of dollars in, quote, the bad faith transportation of people into New York with the evil intention of shifting the cost of care to New York. The $708 million sought by the lawsuit is based on what the city says it has spent to care for 33,000 migrants. America is at a breaking point with record levels of illegal immigration. The lawsuit comes a day after 60 Republican U.S. House lawmakers visited Eagle Pass, including House Speaker Mike Johnson. He called the massive influx of migrants a catastrophe. We, we represent over half the U.S. states because every state in America is now a border state. In two years, Texas has spent some $4.5 billion through Operation Lone Star. That includes money spent to bus more than 80,000 migrants to so-called sanctuary cities, including Chicago, Denver, Los Angeles, and New York City. Uh, no mayor should have to deal with the crisis of this magnitude. Last week, uh, we had 3,000 uh, migrants and asylum seekers who arrived here. There's some weeks we get uh, anywhere from 3,900 to 4,000. In a statement, Governor Greg Abbott called the lawsuit baseless, adding that buses and migrants have the constitutional right to do business and travel anywhere in the U.S. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. All right, so here at home, taking a live look outside here, 55 degrees, and you can tell by looking there, ooh, we're going to be talking some rain. The question is, how long is it going to last? What's going on, Adam? Well, it's going to be a damp night, and uh, the roadways are... A little damp out there right now, but not for the morning commute tomorrow. That's when we're really going to dry out. Let's get right to our rain chances through the night. Then we'll hop into authority radar and notice they're at 60%. So fairly widespread, numerous showers, mainly light, but there are a few pockets of heavier rain. We'll get to those in a moment. Notice by 5 a.m. we're down to 30% and then 7 a.m. And close to sunrise, 10%. So this is really just an overnight uh, rain event that we have. Don't expect a whole lot, though, in terms of overall accumulations. Here's authority radar. And looking at the latest, notice how it's widely separated. But in between these widely separated showers, we have drizzle and overall dampness. You go to the far west side of town, Alamo Ranch, all the way down to I-35 on 1604. Drizzle and dampness, but not a whole lot of actual you know, steady showers. That's closer to Lacoste, but that is headed your way. And you see up near Leon Valley, even a few hits of light to moderate.
moderate rain and near Medina Lake Reservoir. Some more moderate showers here on the far north side of town. Even one just popped up near Castle Hills, but particularly 1604 on the far northeast side uh, near Selma and especially Madison High School here. This is Nacogdoches Road, and that's where we have one downpour that just popped up Nac Nacogdoches and Topperwine Road. Here's the animation of it moving in. So you've got actually, you can probably hear it outside your window if you're in the neighborhood here just within 1604 there, not far from Madison High School. And then Canyon Lake, it's nice to see some rain, moderate rain around Canyon Lake, down to Startsville as well. Smithson Valley, you just had some move through. You've got another batch that's going to be moving in momentarily. Unfortunately, it's a drop in the bucket compared to what we need for Canyon Lake, but we'll take all that we can get. Bernie Fair Oaks Ranch, Bergheim, just some light rain that's coming and going. And as I mentioned before, this will be the case through about 2 a.m. and then it really moves on east of here. Here's a quick look at our future cast, the most updated high resolution model. And it's in line with this activity, lasting past midnight locally, and then really shifting eastward by 2, 3 a.m. And tomorrow morning at sunrise, I anticipate the clouds to start to clear out. We'll still have a decent amount of cloud cover early, but they'll start to clear out with just a few straggler showers in some of our eastern counties uh, closer to Hallettsville, Quero, Carn City possible. This is system one of two systems. Here's the big upper level swirl in New Mexico. I was looking at snowfall reports in the panhandle, parts of the northern panhandle, three inches of snow from this system. This is system number one. System number two is in Alaska right now. It's an upper level swirl over the Aleutian Islands. That's going to be headed our way. It's going to make it here on Monday. Now it gives us a 30% chance of thunderstorms, a little window of opportunity for some storms to pop up Monday for the first part of the day. Most of the rain is going to be North Texas and East Texas, and it will have more snow in the panhandle. If you have any travel plans early next week to the panhandle, a little slick up there. But the main component, main impact with system number two is going to be the wind. It is going to get very windy on the backside of that system. So we're going to fast forward to Monday night into Tuesday. <laughs> Word of advice, take all the Christmas decorations down this weekend. Check out these wind gusts that we're expecting. Monday, 8 o'clock, gusting to nearly 40 miles per hour. Tuesday morning at 2 a.m., we could see gusts near 50 miles per hour, even through sunrise on Tuesday, some wind gusts up to 50 miles per hour. All right, let's talk temperatures quickly and with our time lapse, you'll see some drips and drops on the camera here. It's good to have that 43 this morning, 56 are high temperature, not much of a temperature spread today. And by the way, three hundredths of an inch so far at the airport. Tomorrow we start the day at 48. Then by the afternoon, a lot of sunshine. The sun will return tomorrow pretty quickly. If you're sick of the grayness of the past several days, We'll have a lot of vitamin D tomorrow through the weekend. 67 in the afternoon here in town. Bulverde 63, Floresville 68, Hondo and Castroville, high of 67. This weekend, mornings are going to be cool in the upper 30s, but afternoons will be beautiful. Sunshine into the 60s, then that 30% chance of a few storms first part of Monday. The key headline there with that next system is the gusty winds late Monday on into Tuesday. And by the way, a light freeze possible next Wednesday morning. We'll keep you updated on that. Okay. Thank you, Adam. All right. The Spurs, obviously I wanted them to win, but Victor Wembanyama put on a show on his birthday. Oh man. He put on some highlights yeah. that people in the stand were just, wow. The TNT guys were calling him the unicorn because he was fantastic tonight. Spurs, Bucks, they fought to the very end. Look at Wimby behind the back. Dunk you very much. And Dak Prescott, well, he says he's all about the task at hand and he knows what that is. Coming up. Wimby's teammates showered him with birthday love this morning in Big Board Sports. So Victor Wimbanyama suited up for the first time as a 20-year-old. The Spurs hosting the Bucks tonight on Wimby's birthday. Let's jump right to the second quarter for the bucket of the first half. Wimby throws the ball off the glass and then he goes slam dunk. That's the kind of stuff they do in the NBA All-Star game. 
Let's look again. Wimby with the finger roll off the window for some Thursday night jam. He splits the double team and he made the Bucks pay. He had eight points in the first half and the Spurs trailed 59 to 64 at halftime with the great David Robinson watching Wimby's magic. Third frame, Wimby breaks out another sweet move, dribbling behind his back. Slam dunk plus the foul. The Spurs and Bucks were tied at 93 after three quarters. Fourth quarter was fire. Keldon Johnson goes in for the baseline reverse slam dunk, and the Spurs lead 101 97. That was nasty for two of his 14 points. Bucks up three now, less than a buck 30 to go. Wimby blocks Damian Lillard, and then seconds later at the other end, Wimby for three. Good, and we're tied at 121. Victor had 27 points and five blocks, but Giannis Adenakumpo drops by here responds with dropping the hammer and one three-point play he led all with 44 closing seconds Trey Jones for three in the tie oh man it's no good the Bucks edge the Spurs 125 to 121 yeah we definitely played we played pretty well um as a as a whole group um it was a it was definitely a team effort we, we played good we fought and um we just came up a little short we had some moments some uh <clears throat> you know some moments in the game where Everything seemed to, to, to work out, and uh, I could also feel the crowd believing in us, you know, and uh, getting going. So it's some of this was satisfying tonight. Up next, the Spurs will play at the Cleveland Cavaliers Sunday at noon. Despite averaging a double-double this season with 18.9 points and 10.2 rebounds per game, fans are not showing Wimby very much love at all in the 2024 NBA All-Star voting. The first fan returns are out, and Wimby is not in the top five in the Western Conference among front court voting. Let's check out that list. Here's the top ten in the West front court. LeBron leads the way with more than two million votes. Kevin Durant is second, Nikola Jokic third, followed by Anthony Davis and Kawhi Leonard round out the top five. Paul George is six, Alperin Shingoon seventh, and there's Victor, number eight, with more than 221,000 votes. Chet Holmgren and Carl Anthony Towns round out the top 10. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. With one game left in the regular season, the Dallas Cowboys control their own fate. Win, and they will lock up the NFC East title, the two seed in the NFC playoffs, and some home playoff games, just what the Cowboys need. Lose, and they could fall to fifth seed and start the postseason on the road, and they don't want any part of that. So this Sunday, they need to beat the Commanders on the road. Um, but ultimately, in the end, uh, we've got one game right here to go win this division, um, have a two seed, uh, and that, that makes it a playoff game. That makes it a game, obviously, with a lot of implication. But a, another game that this team needs that will just help us, um, obviously, sets us up in the position for the playoffs, but also for us to have that playoff mindset as we've had for the last couple of weeks or so heading into the, the actual playoff. Linebacker Micah Parsons is one sack away from setting a career high. He's currently at 13 after setting his personal record last season with 13 and a half. Future Longhorns are ready to play at the Dome after the break. He's out here, he's a big, fast, and his routes are insane, making people fall over the place. So uh, he's going to be a real threat at Texas, and it's, it's going to be fun throwing at him these next three, four years. Future Texas quarterback Trey Owens is pumped to be able to throw passes to his soon-to-be Longhorns teammate Ryan Wingo, and the pair will get to share the field for the All-American Bowl. And we had to ask them their reactions to Texas' loss to Washington in the college football playoffs. I think we'll be back. That's all that matters. But um, at the same time, yeah, we, we was all watching it together. And then that last play, you know, it kind of kind of did a little hole in the heart. But like I said, we, we'll be back. I'm not even part of the team yet. And I mean, I I was distraught after that game. We we're all in the players' lines watching it. And we got the ball back with 40 seconds left. And we go down. And that's what happens. It's just, uh, it, was, it was terrible. But uh, yeah, I think that's definitely going to drive us a lot more in this offseason because we want to get back there. And these next three, four years are going to be the same Texas every single year competing for a national championship. The All-American Bowl is Saturday at noon at the Alamo Dome. You can tell they're both very excited to get to Austin. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Larry. Thank you. We'll be right back. Authority radar still has the areas of rain out there coming and going, but out of here by the morning commute, a few hundreds or a few tenths of an inch in the luckiest spots. Thank you so much for watching us tonight. Have an awesome night. We'll see you tomorrow.